Greetings of divine love. Welcome to Mbunye Sangoma, African Priesthood School and Ancestral Healing Ministry. I'm Dr. Yeye Gogonana, founder of Mbunye Sangoma. I welcome you into this sacred space with us. We could not be here without you. Thank you for joining us. We could not be here without our ancestor, the Amalosi, Amakosi, coming to the diaspora and choosing us to do the work that we have been called to do through our lineage of South Africa. We are grateful for the Sangomas before us, all of the teachers before us that have endured through the test of time. Sangomas are ubiquitous in South Africa, but not over here in the United States or in the diaspora. Let's talk about the questions that you have sent in. We're gonna dive right in, because I know y'all don't have time to sit here no long time for no long-winded conversation. First question, do Sangomas believe in God? Absolutely. We not only believe in God, we believe in the goddess. We believe in the father and we believe in the mother. We know that these are our connectors to our actual ancestors and are considered by some in the tradition as the first ancestors from which we were born. Some of the names that are utilized are Nkulu Nkulu Umbelenkani. I like that. Umbelenkani. Yes, that has some energy amazing with when I say it. It feels so good. Y'all should try it. Umbelenkani. And I'm working on that. A click sound. Umbelenkani. Amandla. Amandla. Those are some names depending on the region. Okay. Can other races become Sangomas in South Africa, in the United States? I personally know of three Sangoma females that are here in the United States and they have various backgrounds. One is La Victan, uh, slash also Polish. Another one is Jewish. The other one has a unique experience. She was actually born as a white South African in South Africa, of course. So this Makosi is currently living in the United States. Hey, okay, this next question is actually a question from someone that I was working with and I'm playing this with the permission of that person. So I have um, bipolar disorder and so I get these manic episodes and um, I just, I don't know, I've always felt like spiritual my whole life. And um, so I just wanted to really tap into that and learn more about it. I went to yoga school and I'm going to uh, do a Pilates training as well. Um, so I just like to get more educated and more in touch with myself. And talking further with this person, they wanted to know, could they connect with their ancestors despite the fact it was diagnosed with the bipolar disorder? That can definitely happen. That bipolar disorder could be because of that connection, that mental health illness or that physical illness that we talked about in the first video when we asked what are some of the symptoms of being called to become a Sangoma. Yes, you can still connect with your ancestors, whether or not you're called to become a Sangoma through that illness, we don't know. That's something that would have to be diagnosed by a Sangoma. And that Sangoma will determine whether you need to go see a medical doctor and return to them for treatment training or that your call your illness is actually a physical manifestation of something that you're dealing with in this lifetime but the important thing is that there's stabilization and some investigation done to really make a distinction between what's happening with your spirit why do people have to pay for initiation i feel it should be free let me give you a little scenario here just imagine that you are getting up you're preparing for your day you have to go into work you have you have to go into work to work you're working work you're working you're putting a month's work 
at the end of those days, you're coming home, you're going to sleep, you're washing up, you're eating, and you're repeating this process at the end of the month. You don't get a check. Generally, you get paid for the work that you do. We are not living in times where we are exchanging cows, cowboy shells, chickens, jewelry, gold, silver. You get what I'm saying? Well, San Goma is no different than any other profession. It is a way of life. It is what we're called to do. Yes, some San Gomas go out and they work a nine to five. They're nurses and doctors and lawyers and traditional jobs, so to speak. But there are those who are engaged in the Sangoma work full time. If that's being the case, when you come back home from your job, you still have a house that you live in that you may have to pay rent or mortgage for, or you may have to uh, pay for your room that you're staying in. You have gas and electric. You have food to buy so that you can live and supplies when it's time you got water to buy in some cases. So there's a couple of other things that you have to take care of that requires that monetary exchange. So it's work and people are compensated for the work that they do. Sangomas are no different, y'all. All right, I hope that was a great answer for you. <laughs> Once I find my teacher, what happens next? It depends on your gobella. Your gobella will take you through a process according to the lineage. Every Sangoma is initiated into a particular lineage. And in this lineage, there are particular protocols and particular steps that are followed according to that lineage. And this may actually answer the question that I received today about how is the training session conducted. I can get more into that in the next video in terms of how our lineage do some things. Some things are really sacred that we cannot reveal, but those things that I'm able to share with you, I will do my best to explain that in another video. And our last question is, I don't feel like I have a call but I would like to maintain a connection with them. Since, I mean, you have that connection with your ancestors. Now, in terms of the specifics of what you need to do to enhance that connection, to be aware of how they're speaking to you, how they're moving around you, what they are requesting of you, that would require a divination. You can meditate and sit and ask for guidance from your ancestors as to what is it I need to do to connect with you more deeply. In some places, you just set up a, a space for them and that's allocated for your ancestors. You put a picture up and whatever else they're requiring that you feel in your own spirit, you can do that. I believe that's all of our questions today. Yay! <laughs> we got through that. I look forward to connecting with you again, and I hope that you look forward to connecting with us again. Until then, stay in light, stay in love, stay in good health. May the ancestors continue to guide you, to protect you, and to open you up to a plethora of amazing experiences that they have to offer you. Togoza, Madasina, no Hasheyo. Ayi Bobo Anechara and thank you very much. Om Shanti. Peace.